Runners are inherently at a greater risk of weak bones, which doesn't make sense. John Vick and others examined this idea in this paper, stating athletes from high impact sports are expected to have a five to 30% higher bone mineral density compared with non-athletes. And as such, we should expect they have Z-scores above the population norm. Collegiate runners tend to not have as dense of bones as other athletes. Adolescent runners tend to not have as dense of bones as other athletes. Some of this is probably due to the predictable nature of running and the culture of underfueling that's really common with any level of runner. When a runner goes to investigate their bone mineral density, we should probably interpret it differently than the sedentary population. When a runner gets a DEXA scan, the gold standard for determining low bone mineral density, they'll get a Z and T score. These scores tell us how dense someone's bones are compared to what we would expect them to be for their age and gender. With scores of negative one to negative two, meaning a runner has osteopenia, and scores of negative one or worse showing osteoporosis. And a less dense bone is more likely to break. These scans are important to help us figure out if we need to treat the fact they have low bone mineral density. The authors go on to say that any number below zero should be treated. If you're a clinician and your patient gets a DEXA scan, you need to ask for their specific values. Ideally, they're gonna show you what their scan looked like. You're gonna find runners that will get categorized as normal that still have a negative value for their bone density. These are the DEXA scans of a patient of mine showing that we can make an improvement even if that person is not in an osteopenic or osteoporotic state. Ideally, we catch this stuff early, meaning we need a lower cutoff for determining if a problem is present. I would encourage you all to read the article. You can check it out in the comments. Thinking Cap Thursday.